A very good evening, everybody that's watching us uh, from across the nations of the world. Uh, this is Red Friday. Welcome on board, everybody. Welcome on board from Uganda, from the United States of America, from Tokyo, Japan, uh, from Boston, United States of America, from here in Sweden, across the globe, from Australia, wherever you're watching us from. We're welcoming you to the live broadcast of the Red Friday. It's a hot Red Friday this Friday, and you can see all the panelists are red hot, <laughs> you know, and waiting to deliver their remarks on the top, uh, on the hot topics that are, have been coming in as the week has been running and as the movement has been going, as the revolution has been uh, unfolding. So very, very, very warm welcome to every one of you. And I would start by introducing myself and also introducing uh, my panelists. I'll give them one minute each to introduce themselves, but I'll start with myself. My name is Kingsley William, pastor of the Believers Love Nation Ministries in Kampala, Uganda, and also here in Sweden. Uh, I greet you all in the mighty name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For those of you who go to church, you know, welcome to this program for it's for everyone. You know, we're open to everybody. Thanks very much. And so in one minute, I would like to ask Comrade Anthony Nanyumba to introduce himself to the people. Thank you. Thank you, comrades. My name is Anthony Nanyumba, based from Tokyo, Japan, and I'm a coordinator for no chapter japan you are most welcome thank you thank you very much comrade uh, anthony and then we will move on to comrade uh, uh tina brown from the usa welcome to the show thank you for having me yes my name is tina brown and i am the coordinator for pennsylvania usa Thank you very much, Comrade Tina Brown. That's a comrade who is an American, but is a coordinator for NUP activities in Pennsylvania and USA. For those of you that have uh, not been able to, to, to get it right on, I've repeated it. And then we'll move over to Comrade JK in Boston, USA. Please go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you, Comrade Kingsley. This is JK from Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I'm a people power activist and I would really love to see a new Uganda. So that's here. That's why we're here fighting for this. Thank you all the viewers who are on and we promise it's going to be a beautiful show tonight. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, comrade JK. And for those of you that have just joined us and those of you that are going to join us later, I would like to let you all know it's a hot week. It's been a hot week. You know, in, in, in Luganda, we're saying we, we usually use the term that uh, this thing is taking us at high speed, 360 kilometers per hour. Akarimi kagudeo. So basically, a lot of hot topics and a lot of hot issues. We're going to be discussing John Baptist Chibalama issue here, right here on Red Friday. We're going to be discussing the vetting process of the NUP. And of course, we're going to be discussing the continued closure of places of worship, you know, in Uganda. If it is really if it's really COVID or there is some political play that is coming into play right now. Uh, you're going to be hearing from your all your panelists so stick by stand by don't touch your dial and don't move anywhere invite friends and please start sharing the video share this video as many times as you can share it with with as many people as you, as you can so that we can all be in sync and we can all get together and in this board together absolutely thank you very much for the comments those of you that are commenting whitney from i don't know you can type where you're watching from and we will be glad you know to see that uh, to let the viewers know that you were with us. Thanks very much once again. So I'll go straight to the issues. You know, we're going to start up with the issue of uh, election, uh, the vetting process that's going on in the, in the NUP uh, party. And th there has been vetting of different candidates uh, in different positions, member of parliament, uh, councillors, uh, district chairman, and stuff like that. And, you know, this vet vetting process has seen a lot of huddles, has seen a lot of government arm trying to resist the process, trying to, to make the party uh, um, uh, go slow on doing its process. The process has attracted a lot of members. It has attracted a lot of people coming into the party, seeing that the party activities are serious. And you know, the vetting process has also had the huddle of uh, people 
who, who are saying, who are already coming out to claim that even if we're not given the NUP card, we are gonna go ahead and campaign and we're gonna go ahead and declare ourselves, you know, uh, the, the NUP uh, party uh, hold card holders for this election. So I will start right there on the vetting process. And I would like to bring a question to uh, the new member on the panel, uh, Comrade Tina Brown from the USA. Um, uh, what do you think when it comes to things of uh, vetting, uh, who should hold the party card and who should be the party candidate? Uh, of course, putting together your experience from the US, how it's done in the US, and the way it is being done uh, by NUP, which is uh, they, they sit the candidate down and give him a quiz of questions. And then uh, the candidate tells the people what they're going to do. And then they try to put together all the other factors, the support on ground and stuff like that. What do you make of it when some people come out and say that even though I'm not given the party card, I'm going to continue and contest using these party colors and using this uh, party party uh, uh, symbol as the candidate, even though I'm not given the card. Uh, what do you make of such a situation and what would be your, your, your reaction as a, par, uh, as a people power coordinate, coordinator in Pennsylvania? Hmm. I, I would um, totally agree um, that they should, you know, if we wanna keep our, our, our NUP, it should be our right to be able to keep our um, our colors, our, our umbrella, um, the trademark. I think that um, it would be appropriate that people, you know, who are people power supporters are able to do so. Okay, and then uh, uh, going to, 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 to the question of uh, uh, the fact that if they have not been given the card, if the party has said, okay, you are three candidates in the same position, and this mm -hmm. is the candidate that we have given our party card. You know, this is the candidate that has shown more credibility. He has shown more support on ground and he will most likely win the election for the party. And the two that have not been given the card, what would be your advice to these people that have not been vetted by the party to be the standing candidates in that position because of reasons that one of their members has been deemed uh, a little bit more credible for that position in this particular time. What should these other two members that have not taken the card, uh, how should they react? How should they behave? What kind of spirit would you want to see? Um, they should act appropriately um, when, um, I didn't quite understand that question. Um, uh, can because, I pass uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass it around, uh, and I'm gonna okay. explain it again. Yeah, uh, okay. those of you who are from Uganda, you know that uh, the party cards are being given to the people who are gonna stand in the different positions. Now, if one candidate, for example, for the mayor or post, we have Jose Chameleon, we have Latif Sebagala, and we have uh, Hajna Santege Sebagala. If that card is given to one person. What should the rest do? What, how should the rest react? How should these two who have not got the card to stand as them on, on the mayor position do? I'll start with uh, Comrade Anthony Nanyumba. What are your thoughts on what should be the reaction on these other two who have not been vetted by the party to hold the, the, the card for the party in this particular election? Uh, one, I would like to categorize it in the way that uh, the noob struggle is not a business whereby that uh, the one who come first or the one who which will be given a tender will be the will be the first the, the one which will be given a tender will be the beneficial to get more profits mm. this is about a nation mm. uh the candidates who have uh, stand for each position one they need to stand with integrity integrity at the same time they need to put the nation first you know once you decide to put the nation first it can solve everything because we all fall on the uganda flag uganda flag is not just like a flyer whereby somebody can tear it and get another flyer it was it was given to us during the during the independence colonial time when we got our independence so we respect it me i would like to appeal to all the members one 
we have got the advantage. Advantage is like this. Uh, the NRM, they are the first one to vet. As they were the first one to vet, we have learned the the we have learned the the circumstances which took place during the NRM. It became a chapter and a story all over the world. Now here we ask ourselves, members of the noobs, we have been on the ground. We are the party the people put their belief and all of their faith to liberate Uganda. We will it be a, a good example to show to the people that also in Inup we are pulling a rope, we are fighting for positions. This is not a time to fight for positions. One, we have seen the NRM, they have fight for positions, they carry gun. So if they carry gun, do we think that Inup or we are going also to carry the knives or the panga to start slicing ourselves during the vet time? Here is a question to come to each one member of NOOP, the respect from the top, what is the values, why our principal Chagrani stood for, for the NOOP to liberate Uganda. People need to sort out the matter, the election, the vet will be there today, tomorrow it will finish. If we fight by each other, the day after tomorrow, we cannot look each other in our faces. Let's set history. History comes once. Now let the noob, those people who are willing to stand for noob, we are not fighting for, we, we are not telling them that they should aim for position. Positions, you can go to parliament, you will be there for five years. After five years, then election, they will come again. If you did not perform well, they will drive you out of the parliament. So this is not a matter of aiming to go to parliament, but all the members, they, are, they have a value and they have a position from the grassroots. There are so many positions where they can feel. So the NUP member, this is one chance. This is one bullet. This is one way. Stand as one with the face of NUP. Set example to show the NRM. Mind you, NRM, they have opened the eye, watching the NUP. If we get those circus and wrangles of a fight, that will be an attempt to suicide to destroy in opposite interest and the, the ideology and the, all the effort what people power and the people the power you have put in for the past two years it will be just like a dropping a drop of milk into the ocean so i appeal to all members let's stand as one to set history in the in the 21st century that no member they have been hearing us before they wanted to to tarnish our image that the noop they are bayayas they are the bavumis they are the fighters but we have managed to overcome it. Now, uh, Dictator M7, with his team, they are watching. They have one bullet to undermine the NOP. So if the candidates try to fight each other, it will mean that any other story of fight, the one they fought a few weeks ago, once the NOP start to fight now, is the NOP's image will be the one in the air. The NOP's image will move all over the world because the whole world is watching the, for the donors and the older stakeholders in other parts of the world. It's not a subject of only the people in Uganda. Now they have seen any other with the, with the, with the holes, their comrades and their members of NOP stand as one, set example, create history for the 21st century. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Comrade Anthony Nanyumba. And to put it in brief, he's trying to say there shouldn't be the same fights as have been happening in the NRM. And actually, our narrative, from what he was trying to say, I could only pick one point that if you have not been given to take the party card or to be the member that has been vetted by the party, you should respect whoever the party has found uh, eligible to hold their card. And we should work together with them. And we should even help show the spirit of togetherness and unity by working with them and helping in their campaign to become the eventual winners of that position and seat. 
And uh, from what he has said, I've also gathered that uh, because the new government of the NUP is coming into power, of course, one of the core values is to lift the economy of Uganda. And in so doing, the NUP is going to cut public expenditure on politics and on political leaders. That means these seats that people are fighting for, member of parliament, uh, uh, district councillor, the salaries are actually going to be slashed so that someone comes into a position not to make money but to serve the country. It's going to take people of sacrifice who are willing to leave their businesses that are high earning, but then join the party and earn a relative salary just like any other Ugandan, because this is the only way we can develop hospitals. This is the only way we can build schools if we cut that expenditure that the government of Uganda is wasting on parliament and on leaders and on uh, public servants. So I'm going to go over to Comrade JK with, within the same chapter. We have seen uh, people, some candidates of, who claim to belong to the NUP, and they have set up their own political command centers, and they have already started to announce themselves as the member of parliament or the person that has the NUP card for member of parliament. They have started to announce themselves as mayor, as in all other positions. Uh, what would you, what would be your take on that? Uh, how do you think these people should behave? Uh, is it, uh, should they continue to do that? Or should they wait for the few days that the party is having to, to really declare who has the, you know, their, their card and who is going to be standing in which position? I mean, what's your uh, take on that? What do you think should be done by, by these members? Yeah, thank you, Comrade Kingsley. Uh, what, what you're going to need to know that we are dealing with a party that has been in power for 35 years. They have the capacity to infiltrate the, the political part of NUP. Whoever you see out there who does not respect the values and the core fundamental principles of people power, that means they do not belong to people power. Because the first core value of people power is constitutionalism and rule of law. So if the president comes out and, and, and uh, speaks about the process, how it's going to be managed, how we're going to be vetting, and if for you, you think otherwise, then you do not belong to the, to, to the people power. You're seeking for your own things because the dictator has the power and he has the money to infiltrate the party. Not that everyone who is putting on a red beret and who is putting on a red t-shirt for people power that he's, he's there for the people, he's there for the liberation. Most of these people are here because they want to spy on the, on the camp of, of Noob. So putting in context, we cannot even copy anything from NRM because you saw the election and uh, the Honorable Anite came out strongly saying that people came from Congo and he voted for Ayume. This was really embarrassing because a party that has been in power for 35 years and you get a full minister coming on a TV set saying that people voted, people came from Congo and voted. So what do we expect at the end of the day in the general election? That means President Museven is preparing so many people from Congo and South Sudan to come and participate in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in elections in Uganda. So we cannot copy anything. That's why the president, His Excellency Robert Chagulani saint and the committee opted for this type of vetting that they should deploy our team on ground to investigate because this is a people, this is a people's party. This is, this is service for the people, not service for, for, for yourself. So we have to first find out who is strong on ground, who has the voices of the people. That's why we cannot opt for the NRM type that is, that is full of rigging. Imagine you have a party that has been in power for 35 years which is spearheaded by a full general, but they cannot count one, two, three, basic algebras. They cannot count one, two, three to a hundred. That's where the fraud came from. They started fighting. They started, uh, they brought in police to shoot at each other. Also, we cannot see this going, we cannot let this go free without us speaking about it. Mr. Museveni, when he saw, when he saw that uh, his NRM, that the one they call mass party, is deteriorating. What he said that Ugandans should every Ugandan that has an an identity card should go out and vote. 
this was really very embarrassing. You know what? President Museven himself, through, through his chairman of the Electoral Commission, uh, the one, the one, the, the chairman of the Electoral Commission of NRM, they came out and said they have 12 million voters of NRM. So it would be so embarrassing for the 12 million voters at the end of the primaries when they have voted not, not even 1 million. That's why Museven opened up this, this, this thing that everyone should go out there and vote to, to clarify and satisfy Ugandans that NRM has 12 million voters. But if Museven only opted for the NRM supporters to vote, we would see about over 400,000 people voting. Seriously, people are tired. So our kind of vetting should be respected by all the people who think and, and also appreciate the values and principles of people power. That is constitutionalism and rule of law. And the person who doesn't respect our principle, they do not stand with NUP. And that means they are not NUP, they are infiltrators and they are being paid and used by the NRM regime to sabotage the activities of people power. Thank you. Thank you very much, Comrade JK. Uh, now on this one, I need from you a yes or a no. Uh, are you trying to say that anybody who is uh, holding uh, conferences, holding uh, press conferences in the same time that the party president is trying to hold a press conference to release important information and somebody is busy in their own political command center also pushing their own agenda or pushing an agenda uh, pur purported to be party agenda in the same time. Are you saying that this person is not showing respect to the party because these activities have clearly not been sanctioned by the party? Is that a yes or no? Is, are these person, persons acting outside of the laws of NUP? Um, thank you, I, just, just a minute. I would say yes. But if we go back, because we, we are looking, we are reflecting from the democracy, the big democracies. Mm. In the United States, we have Elizabeth Warren, who has served in the, in the, in the administration for, for a very long time. We have Andrew Young. We have so many uh, contenders who had come to pick a Democratic Party ticket. But mm. when Joe Biden came through and, and, and beat them all, they supported Joe Biden and they came out, called him and accepted defeat. So we need to see this kind of change that is also that realizable in our own country, we can find, we can, we can create this as people power, as a group, we can serve as an example that Absolutely. as those big democracies we, we appreciate, we can copy them. And then we see that people who have been dropped in the, in the voting, supporting the person who has been given the, the flag bear ship of the, of the, of the group. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now of, I'm going to flip over. Of course. Over. I'm gonna f flip over, uh, I I'm gonna give you your minute, uh, Comrade Anthony. I'm gonna flip over to Comrade Tina Brown because I want to, 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 to get this uh, a, a bit uh, more uh, wide and uh, extensive. He talked about the USA and we have a person right from the USA. I'm gonna uh, bring in this issue uh, for all of you. Uh, President Museveni has continued to close down churches, uh, places of worship and mosques and all places of worship uh, under the guise that COVID is still so strong in Uganda and we need to, you know, the death toll has been purported to be rising by the Ministry of Health. The cases have, have been purported to be increasing. And uh, we have seen, of course, clearly in his own party, party the SOPs are not followed and stuff like that. But my, my, within that same question, of course, he continues to close down places of worship and stuff like that. But in that same question, this is a president who claims to be a Christian. This is a president who claims to, uh, who brings people in his, uh, you know, uh, uh, state house and they hold national prayers every after uh, like four or five weeks, you know, praying to God, quote unquote, you know, to save the, to save the day. Now, Comrade Tina Brown uh, from the United States, I know this is a first world country where people uh, are, are usually uh, examined if they really follow what they say. You know, we saw the example of Nancy Pelosi who was pushing the agenda of masks and mandatory mask wearing where she got trapped in a saloon and she was not putting on a mask herself, you know? And so I would like to relate it to the question of Museveni being a purported Christian. When you look at all the things that President Museveni is doing and he's government is doing and his army is doing you know the fact that he has backtracked on a lot of statements you know i mean 
what do you make of his Christianity? How would you describe is his Christianity if he is Christian at all? I would just like to give you the floor to just explain to me what kind of Christian you would term him and also explain to the people uh, uh, from your knowledge of Christianity and religion what a true Christian should be doing if it was President Museveni. So uh, over to you, Comrade Tina Brown. Yes, thank you. Um, first off, um, the Bible tells us to judge people by their fruits um, yes. so that we know who is among us, you know, who's like speaking among us. And um, truly by um, M7's fruits, um, I would say that he is not a Christian um, due to the fact God's children would not order um, to go out on a, on a murder chase. They would not order somebody to be murdered. God's children do not act like that. God tells us to love all or to love everybody and show everybody respect. But he does not show fruits of the spirit, which um, God uh, commands us to do. He, um, we all know that, you know, he goes out and he tear gas people for no reason. I saw just yesterday that he um, tear gassed and a mother and, and a little baby was so sick from it. That, that is not God. God would not do that. God, God's children so love. And that's, you know, that's what we're supposed to do. And judging by our fruits, we, as, as a Christian, we are to set a good example of what God's word tells us to do. And by um, M7's um, appearance, he is not showing the fruit of the spirit, not one fruit of the spirit. I would go on to say that he is demon possessed is what I would go on to say. And as far as churches are a necessity, God's children, we feed off of God's word. That's what God tells us to do. We're supposed to read his word daily, go to him in prayer. You know, when we're having these kind of problems, we have to give them to God. So to keep churches closed, I, I think that is a horrible thing because as, as a child of God, you know, we need, I need that fellowship from my brothers and sisters to be able to you know to move on we're supposed to we're supposed to um help each other so um christianity in um m7 he needs to go back into the word of god and examine himself because he is not showing the fruits of the spirits sir thank you very You're much, welcome. Comrade Tina. Uh, and, and the point of information, that, that has been really powerful because you called it as it is. You just told it as it is because <laughs> we're talking about demon possession. We should not look at uh, so far, you know. <laughs> this guy is clearly acting and is clearly showing that someone, he is demon possessed because you cannot be a child of God and go out to and set out, uh, send the army to kill somebody and even applaud them for, 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 for the torture that they did. Which child of God does not have the compassion of God you know, for that? And I'm speaking for all religions. I mean, even if you're Muslim, there is no religion that would condone the kind of behavior that the, uh, Mr. Museveni is displaying to Ugandans currently. Now, uh, just one more question before I let you go on this same matter. Mm -hmm. Mr. Museveni has been known to be supported by the church in Uganda. You know, in fact, the evangelicals, as you call them in America, in Uganda, we call them the balokole or the people who call themselves the saved, but uh, the, um, I would use the American term because you understand it uh, coming from America. They're called the evangelicals, you know, the, the, the pastors and, you know, the, 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 where, where you see those, uh, all those, uh, the, new, the new church, the charismatic Christians, you know, they are the biggest support. They have been giving him support always. They, their church platforms are open to him. You know, uh, he has been giving lots of money, not only to the evangelicals and even to these other churches. And he's known to be, you know, a person who is well grounded in this uh, environment. What do you make of those Christians? What does that has, have to speak about their Christianity if they support a person who claims to be Christian and does all these things? Does this really give us an image into the nature of his supporters, the nature of these people and these churches that so support him that they wouldn't even come out to condemn the actions that are contrary to the word of God that he is doing? What do you make of his followers, his supporters, especially from the Christian fraternity? As far as from the, the Christian standpoint, um, I like to say God's children. Uh, first off, 
I am very disappointed of the so-called Christians um, churches in Uganda who are not helping support the people who really need help and who are taking blood money from from the dictator. Uh, that is to me that is Judas being sold out. They they're selling out, you know. They're selling out the true word of God. They're not standing on and, and supporting what they are supposed to. Because as, as pastors, so to speak, um, you know, you're going to be held accountable for all the wrongful leading you are doing. And people who are not supporting and standing up for the word of God, but they're saying that they are Christians and they're, you know, and they're, they're leading people. Those are false prophets. And the Bible tells us to clearly be aware of false prophets. So if they're supporting a murderer, they're no child of God. They need to get in the word of God and get in check because they are truly not a, a child of God. And I am calling them by my fruits for people who say, oh, you can't judge people. Yes, we can. We can judge them by their fruits. And what, and what the churches are doing over there, um, they're disappointing me, me, myself, they're disappointing me because they should be helping the people in the struggle, not condoning a murderer and upholding him. They need to help the people because on judgment day, on that great and mighty day, which we're all going to come face to face with, with God himself, he's going to say to them, what did you do? You hurt my people. You didn't follow my word. You didn't follow my example. So therefore, they will answer on judgment day for what they are doing to the Ugandan people, sir. Thank you so very much. I could, it, it couldn't get more clear than that. You know, she has put it uh, out there very well for you. And for those of you who would be asking themselves what to do, the answer is simple, plain and clear. God stands with the oppressed. God has never stood with the oppressor. He's always for the oppressed people. And what we're talking about, the oppressed people today are the millions of Ugandans that are disenfranchised, are the young people that don't have jobs, are the mothers that are dying in labor wards every day, and those babies, beautiful Ugandan leaders of tomorrow that are dying even without spending 24 hours on this planet Earth because the dictator and his government have stolen all the funds that would have built the hospitals, that would have built the schools, that would have built the factories. And in the end of the day, we are having a crying nation because of a person who purports to be Christian. So if you follow him and you follow his actions and still support his regime, you have a problem on your mind because you're not you're clearly not a child of God. I'm not gonna say more than that on that issue. I'll let you guys digest it for yourselves I'm going to move forward to Comrade Anthony Nanyumba and bring the hot topic <laughs> in place. Now, we have whole heard that Mr. John Baptist Chibalama came out and handed over and transferred the party, you know, his party, NURP, uh, to the leadership of Honorable Robert Chagla Nisentamu. We've had the videos. I'm sorry, I don't have the opportunity to play for you those videos, but if I had, I would have, you know, and you have heard him all of yourselves real time saying we have transferred the party leadership and, uh, and, and, uh, and activities to a younger generation, which is able to build the party even more than we could ever do and bring more Ugandans together so that in the end, they achieve the desired, the so much desired change. Now, after a few months, it's been a few months, remember, put in mind, he has always come out and say, they're coming after me. They're looking for me. The government wants to imprison me. The government wants to arrest me. The government wants to do this. You know, they, they're coming after me. He has said that countless times. Now, knowing all those facts and seeing the recent video that he came out, uh, actually, if you can tell for us who can tell with psychology and study body language, he was clearly reading or getting the information from someone what he was saying. He was totally uncomfortable speaking what he was speaking. It was not coming from his heart. It was coming from somebody. It looked like a gunpoint kind of situation. You know, he was in an undisclosed location with an undisclosed people interviewing him. And he claimed that the party has been sold to him, you know, for a promise of 5 million US dollars you know, and we can all see this, I'll call it as it is, this government gimmicks of trying to deceive Ugandans into yet another, you know, 
uh, a attention diversionary activity, you know, well knowing that the party was handed over in, uh, in uh, goodwill, you know, and all the steps of the law were followed. So there are two narratives here. It is either Mr. John Baptist Chibalama was bought off actually by the NRM because we know the NRM to do a lot of that stuff or he is under intimidation. He's held against his own will in an unknown location to everybody. And he is saying these things on gunpoint. They probably have one of his family members or close relatives at ransom and saying, if you don't say this, if you don't come out and backtrack on your statements on, of, of the party, you know, we, we're not, we're, we're gonna do this to, to your person or we're, go, we're, we're gonna do this to your, so he's clearly under a life-threatening situation and he's uh, really doing things uh, against his will. So those are the two narratives, notwithstanding that whatever happens with Mr. John Baptist Chibalama, of course, the NUP exists legally, all the legal formations were followed, and uh, the confidence has been brought by the president to all people that the party is strong and standing firm legally. So people out there do not be scared. There's nothing going on that could change the party. You are standing as candidates and as supporters of a party that exists legally. Now, Mr. Anthony Nanyumba, what do you make of these two narratives? Has he been bought off? Or do you think he's, uh, he's uh, being uh, uh, held against his will and he's being intimidated and threatened into saying all these things? And because soon we will know wh wh which is the true of these two narratives. But what do you make of it uh, as Ugandans are watching and listening to you, please? Thank you, comrade. Uh, I would like to say that you, when you devalue what you do, the world will devalue you. So Mr. M7, all the things he has done, the world is devalue him. You can see the background of Mr. Chibalama by its nature. One, it were, the press conference was done at night. Uh, by night, it shows you psychologically that he, Mr. Chibalama, the environment which was surrounding him he was under fear. He was under gunpoint, whereby even during the daytime, if, they were, if it was genuine that Mr. Chivalama is speaking from his heart, I could expect Mr. Chivalama to make a press conference in the compound and the daytime where people even pass at the, bar, at the back of his profile. But this is a place, uh, an identified place, and it was on the high building, whereby there were some threats that if you attempt to refuse to talk what we are telling you to talk, we are going to throw you from the building. So Mr. Chivalama was under fear. He was forced to confess the story which was not true. And based on the statement which we have heard from the NOP, the Avdabi, uh, which was uh, signed by Mr. Chibalama at first when he was handing over the NOP to, to our people power movement. It was different with another Avdabi which was being given again under the Ghani point. Even the judge refused to recognize that, which means that the regime they are trying to use uh, what we could call a kangaroo style in whatever they are doing. Now, here is a case for the people of Uganda now to decide. One, uh, I just want you to, push, to put you one side or to show you an example. Let me go to Museven direct. Uh, if it was in Museven uh, to be with Mr. Chibalama, Mr. Chibalama, if he happened to hand over this party to Mr. Museven, by now to assure you, Mr. Chibalama will be a dead soul because Mr. Museven, he doesn't want to live with history. He doesn't want to live with the evidence. So Mr. Museven in the first place after receiving the powers from Mr. Chibalama 
Mr. Chibalama will be a dead soul, will be assassinated. But here with the people power, because the people power stands for the truth and stands with integrity and starts with the value, values of the people and the life itself to protect each citizen. The people power and uh, the people power stock or nope, they did not attempt to go to the line of killing or assassinate Mr. Chibalama because they wanted Mr. Chibalama to be there as the historical, whereby by 2021, when, when Nupu take power, Mr. Chibalama will be witnessed with the millions of Uganda in Nambole and to give a big clap for him for the job what he has done. But with the regime, by seeing that, the regime did not want to see Mr. Chibalama to reach to that history moment. Now they try to divert, and also they know that with, whatever they try to attempt to do all of those things, it will distract Mr. Ch our principal, Mr. Chagranyi's focus on the concentration on other important issue. Because the regime, they have lost everything, you can see, imagine yourself when we look about, about the subject of Mr. Chibalama. If the regime are convinced that they are going to win the election in 2021, why did they now attempt to do all those kangaroo style to create stories which are not genuine? Those are kicks of, those are signs of dying horse. So the regime, now is trying to attempt to do all of those bad games to create a fear in the people. And we are seeing only Mr. Chibarama, but a lot of people are going to experience such impunity. But here we can just take a one step. One I could suggest, because we don't have other avenues where we could talk things. Let's talk in the open place. For me, I see now Mr. Chibalama, regardless of whether he's on our side, Mr. Chibalama now is on remote control. So the games, they are the one now controlling him. We can see Mr. Chibalama today will talk and show the world that is on our side. The day after tomorrow, these people, they will point a gun on his head again to place him to talk other different subjects. Here is a case. If Mr. Chibalama, could attempt, I don't know when or which day or which week, Mr. Chibalama's safe heaven and for the, for the interest of our NOOP and for the interest of Ugandans and for our movement for, to be able to succeed without any interruption, Mr. Chibalama would rather take exit out of Uganda. Because when Mr. Kibarama take exit to go out of Uganda, the regime will no longer have a hand. The remote will be a remote without a battery. So they will not do all of those bad games. And Mr. Kibarama will help, the, will help us on the international community, the international community to recognize that in Uganda, when you surrender your party to another leader, you become enemy of the state, which means that the democracy is not in Uganda. There, the international community will put more eye on Uganda so that even when we want to get other evidence, Mr. Chibalama can be either in Europe, can be in the UK, can be in the Netherlands, can be in the USA. Mr. Chibalama can give evidence even on online. But right now, if we leave Mr. Chibalama to be in Uganda, time will come. The regime can even kill the ta destroy the tongue of Mr. Chibalama to look like uh, this honorable. There is which honorable was poisoned. The, uh, what is his name? Do you remember him? Uh, Haji. The honorable was poisoned. Yeah, it's uh, honorable from uh, Islamic community, I think, Hussein Chanjo. Definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Mzei Chanjo now, he used battery to talk. But for now, the regime, they can use the poison which will not even allow Mr. Chivalama to talk. So that Mr. Chivalama will just be there like a, like a doll. 
then for them, they can bring another subject which they can use to fight against our noob. So the person who would be there to give evidence, the tanga will be already gone. So here is my, uh, my, my suggestion that Mr. Chivalama, if he happened to get out from those people, because we have seen other people like the uh, Dr. Kizabe CJ was able so he was arrested and later he was able to get out of the country. The plan and the solution will be for Mr. Chivalama to get to take exit to get out of Uganda. Right now, he has been already put a remote, he's on remote control. He cannot be a free man in Uganda and he cannot confess the right thing from his heart. So here is where all Ugandans to share this suggestion to see the way how Mr. Chibalama can, can get a life safety and a good place so that Mr. Chibalama could come back to Uganda when Uganda is already liberated with the NOOP and the principal Chagulany. Thank you very much. So as, as thank you, you all heard it, thank you very much, Comrade Nanyumba. As you all heard it from Comrade Nanyumba, he's suggesting amnesty for Mr. Chivalama because sometimes people who do big things like this, you know, for the liberation, of course, will not be let walk free. But for now, we can all begin with a hashtag of free Mr. John Baptist Chivalama. Let him say whatever he has to say in open daylight in his home, preferably with all media houses is invited, you know, let him return to his home, have to relax and say all he has to say in his right mind. And if that time comes and things need to go to court, let him appear to court, you know, without being brought by the UPDF or without being brought by anybody else, but himself coming to court and tell us what's really on his mind. Because according to Mr. Anthony Nyumba, he's clearly being held on remote control. He's clearly on gunpoint and doing whatever he's doing because he's been put on gunpoint. Now, in the same case, I'm gonna flip over to comrade uh, JK. Briefly, you know, on that same subject of Mr. John Baptist Chivalama. What do you make of it? Because Comrade Anthony has given us the side of Mr. Chibalama is really held against his will. In fact, from one of our media outlets, it came out that the UPDF are holding Mr. Chibalama. So the Uganda People's Defense Forces are having Mr. Chibalama. Which crime? Nobody knows. Which case he has to answer? Nobody knows. The little we know is because he has transferred the party ownership Robert Chagulani sent them and created the only way for Robert Chagulani sent them to appear on the ballot paper because they had planned for him not to appear, but he outsmarted the government and he came through a neutral party which already existed. Now, Comrade Jake, what do you make of these two sides before I come to Comrade Tina? Because these things involve international affairs. We have talked about a question of amnesty. And I'll come to you, Comrade Tina, about the thing of amnesty. You know, if Mr. Chivalama really, really should seek amnesty or, you know, should seek a, a safer place to leave asylum, you know, so that between now and the elections, he's out of the country. And then when the elections is done, he will be back in the country. But we come to that, uh, Comrade Tina, later. So Comrade JK, I would like you to tell the people, what's your take on the two sides? Would it be he has been bowed off? And he's actually going to say the same things when he comes or he's held under gunpoint and he's being forced to do things against his own will. What's your take? Yeah, thank you so much, Comrade Kingsley. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, Mr. Museven is the most cowardice dictator that has ever existed on planet Earth. But uh, the government and its leader, Mr. Museveni, should know that um, as our principal told him that he's Bobby Wine. Mr. Museveni doesn't know that he's dealing with a celebrity. His Excellency Robert Chagulani Sintamo is a celebrated artist. The president of NUP is not looking for fame. Even, even a kid of two years knows Bobby Wine. So due to the fact that the government is, is on tenterhooks, is on shake right now. These are the impacts. They are devising all the solutions and all possible means. But first and foremost, the script, the person who scripted all this move of abducting Mr. Chivalama is a dull person. He doesn't know how to play the cards. I don't know how Mr. M7 employs these dull people to be in our security because you cannot use a TV 
that has been all over the time malicing his excellence Robert Chagulani sent Amu to produce this information, to produce this video. There is no person among us, these dull members of the security that can come and sit with Mr. Chibalama on live video because they are cowards. You saw Mr. Chibalama when he was handing over the party to Mr. Bobby Wine, His Excellency. Very many people were surrounding the place. I want these people who think what they are doing is right to come sit beside Mr. Chibalama as he makes these pronunciations. These are big cowards. First of all, this has showed weakness in the security organs of the country as Uganda. The army last time said that they, they, they don't know any whereabouts of Mr. Chivalama. The next morning they are conceding that they know and they have Mr. Chivalama. So the integrity of the army and the trust has been lost for the past 35 years. Because what is good for the Gs should be also good for the Ganders. Mr. Museveni wants to do things otherwise and show us something also else. On the other side, the police came out also and said they don't know whereabouts of Mr. Chivalama. But at the end of, it, of the day, the same security organs, so I don't know, do we still have security organs in, in the country that are actively working for the best of the people? Or every security organ is working for themselves and to, 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 to promote themselves to have bigger budgets at the end of the day? Let me, let me remind Mr. Museveni one thing. It is not only the election that takes dictators. It is not only the election that takes dictators. Even though he sabotages people power, even though he stops the activities of people power, his time is due. Umar el-Bashir won the election by 95%, but people, the people of, South, of Sudan, Khartoum, stood up one day and took him off power. That wasn't election. People did not wait for elections. So Mr. Museveni should know that. It's not only the election that takes off dictators. They should know that at any time Ugandans can rise and chase him out of, out of, out of the seat. This is between the, the oppressed and those who are, who are oppressing the Ugandans. So Absolutely. even though you sabotage the activities of people power, this is the right time for Museveni. He has, he has two options. He can risk organizing the election in 2021 and he will seek asylum somewhere else or he can quit with the respect because we've seen it happen. President Moy in Kenya, after 24 years of, of a military dictatorship, he said, no, I'm signing a memorandum that I should be left in my country to enjoy. I'm not, you, you leave my riches, I'll be here. But Mr. Museveni, because he's a very proud person, he knows that he's the only standing general, he's the commander in chief. He doesn't know that people, the people of Uganda have the power over everything. That's why, we simple Ugandans. Every day they make stupid moves, they come back and explain to us their lies, then come back again dis disorganize and destroy their lies again. Do you know why the police comes every day and explains to Ugandans the atrocities they are doing? We do not, we do not ask the, the police and the security organs any report, but they know that we are the bosses. Even Museven, deep inside his heart, even though he said that we are not, he's not our servant, he knows deep inside his heart that we, we, are, we are the bosses, that is our servant. Absolutely. So, well, my humble appeal to the regime that they should act smarter than this thing that happened to Chivalama. We know very well that even around the, the same time that the video was being recorded, there, are very, there, there were many gunmen around him. First of all, his home was surrounded by the military. So, do, should we say that it's the military of Kenya that came and surrounded the home of Mr. Chivalama? No, this is the military of the Republic of Uganda. And we expected answers. Then after a while, they come back again to concede that they have the man. So this is showing panic. This is showing a destroyed regime and very disorganized people in government. Anytime we are ready and the principal is ready to take on leadership from Mr. Museveni, either by ballot or plan B. Thank you, Comrade. By Nam. <laughs> okay, that was very interesting, you know. And uh, uh, I'm sure every Ugandan is up on here, you know, they're all ears and hearing all these comments from fellow Ugandans. You know, now I would like to turn to 
another fellow Ugandan at heart, uh, Miss Tina Brown, you know, about the same issue. Now, uh, we know that uh, whatever Mr. Museveni is doing, you know, buying off opponents, putting people on gunpoint, making them uh, change their mind or backtrack on their words and stuff like that. These are things that he has not started to do yesterday. He has been doing them all over, especially when it's come to a time when he's being uh, so strongly challenged by the people of Uganda, not by opposition candidates in particular, but by the people of Uganda, because it's the people of Uganda who are ultimately saying that we are tired of a 35 year old dictatorship, that we are young people, we are a young generation, and we cannot let our future be determined by, uh, by an 85 or 80 year old person. You know, he cannot tell us that he's gonna build anything. You don't build things at 80. You don't build things at 85, <laughs> you know, that is called departing age. You know, you're leaving. So as we're exiting that point, uh, I would like to ask lastly from Mr. Ms. Tina Brown. We know that all the money he uses, you know, uh, uh, he, all the money uh, uh, Museveni uses is American taxpayer dollars. And I would like to come to you, Ms. Tina, for you to help us comment on, uh, on, on that issue. You know, comment in, uh, in, uh, with respect to Ugandans who should know that you Americans are paying your taxes in order to support the Ugandan government, which claims that it needs a lot of support because it can't run itself. It's not collecting enough taxes from Ugandans. It's not uh, collecting enough revenue. And you know, on the side of the Americans, I would also like to you to, 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 to speak with respect to the Americans who are actually picking up these taxpayer dollars and sending them to Uganda. Uh, what would you like to say as an American taxpayer to whatever Ugandan government is using with the taxes that the American taxpayer is, is paying? Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, first off, I wanted to say um, the American government um, is supporting um, somebody who is supporting um, killing and stuff like that. Uh, America sends each Ugandan household $20 every two weeks to take care of their needs. They send it to the government and the government is not giving it to the people. Uh, so, uh, Sorry, <laughs> comrade, please come back again on that. Word for word. The American taxpayers are sending how much to every Ugandan? Please repeat that statement because I want all Ugandans on here to hear it very clearly. Yes, Yes, please. yes, sir. The American government is sending each Ugandan household $20 every two weeks for a pandemic that doesn't even ex exist in Uganda. However, in, in turn, Moose 70 is not giving the money to the people. He is buying weapons and, and tear gas and things to harm the Ugandan people. And it irates me to know that my country, USA, is supporting such a monster. Because the, the people, you have people who's been locked in their houses since March. You lock people in your houses, you don't give them food, you don't give them water, no means of, of surviving. He's killing off the young generation in, in Uganda, and he's doing it because he doesn't want them to rise. He doesn't want them to, to stand up and, 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 you know, have freedom. He wants to keep them under his thumb, so to speak. So um, as far as... Uh, as sadly as I can you know, say, I want my country, the USA, to stop supporting M7 and th that is helping fuel him and fuel his military and fuel his police, if that's what you want to call those monsters, um, to harm the Ugandan people. So I ask even my government to stop supporting M7 and to redirect that money to um, NUP, people power, so that the people are going to get what is coming to them. Thank you very much. Those are really, really strong words. Uh, they get, they, they kind of put you into a bit of emotion. You know, I'm talking about myself right now. They put me into a bit of emotion. And for those of you who are really scared that the word monster is being used, it's because, you know, in this part of the world, people are not used to this kind of life. You cannot kill your own people and claim to be human. You cannot put innocent people's lives at stake and claim to be human and claim to love them and claim to be their leader who cares about them. You cannot uh, 
promise, you know, to give food. You cannot tell people to stay in their homes and you're going to give them food. And you clearly don't provide it, you know, and expect people to just, you know, just die if they don't have food to eat, you know, but you have received the money for each and every household in Uganda because these loans and grants that are being granted as statistics is first being made. And all the families in Uganda are put in that statistic and then this money is released for each family. Even the American envoy had to come out and speak when America gave, I think it was about 26 million or something US dollars. And he said, we have given the Ugandan government money that every family should receive at least 90,000 a month, you know, to, 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 to add on their, you know, to add on their uh, uh, costs and expenses during this pandemic, which how many families can come and say, I received 10,000 of that money? No family, clearly, you know, and so this is a clear injustice. This is why this lady has been using those strong words, because in this part of the world, they just don't understand what kind of human being is this, you know, what kind of human beings uses people as security, you know, to get a lot of money and then not even share one quarter of it with them. And he claims to be their leader. So that's the reason as to why everybody is coming out strongly on this issue. Now, as we are winding down, because we've had from all our comrades, I'm going to give uh, uh, just a, a minute or two of winding down, you know, of uh, looking into the forward direction, looking into the way forward. I'm glad Comrade Tina has already looked into the way forward, you know, that it would be petitioning the government of the United States to stop supporting a dictatorship, you know, to give the money to channel the money to different organizations like NUP, which would make sure that they, they're accountable and this money gets to the people it needs to reach. You know, we know that some steps have been taken in that direction and uh, they have tried to use NGOs rather than uh, donate to the government directly, you know, and uh, we know that some steps really can be taken more into that direction. So Comrade Nanyumba, of all the things that we have spoken, I want you to wind up with your last word to Ugandans, you know, in the face of all this, in the face of all the intimidation, in the face of all the buying off, in the face of uh, limiting the activities of opposition politicians, in the face of injustice, in the face of closed schools and closed places of worship, when it's uh, totally clear that uh, COVID is not uh, a serious, a big deal in Uganda, uh, what would you like to say, you know, to Ugandans as your closing remarks? Strictly two minutes, comment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, comrade. Uh, I would like to appeal to all of Ugandans. Uh, this is a, a way of uh, Ugandans, they should act like an animal. Uh, you know, animal, a lion can stand in the, in the junction, in the junction of the forest. A lot of animals would be passing there in a big number running. Yes. Please. But the lion always focus. A lion cannot attempt to capture five animals, but only he target one animal among the 15 animals. Now, Ugandans, it's your time to capture your animal. Animal is to claim and capture your right. Your rights have been taken by Mr. Museven. As I have heard from Comrade Tina, you can see it's very shameful. If I'm not mistaken, maybe during COVID, you may find that it's only Uganda as a country which could not get money for COVID if I'm not mistaken, because I have been discussing with other people from other parts of the world. Yes. They have been telling me their government managed to give funds however small it is to their people. But in Uganda, as you have heard from Comrade Tina, that US, USA government give $20 per week per each, per each family. But in Uganda, Mr. Museven used that money for, for buying tear gas and even for giving goons to go to the street and beat people to death. 
Now here is in a question to Ugandans that when you were poor man, how will you think that one day you will get out from the poverty and you become a rich man? You need to work in order to get a rich person. But if you keep yourself always being, uh, being a sadness person and always you call yourself I'm a poor person and yet you have two hands, you cannot come out from that zone. Now, Ugandans, you are trapped. You have seen COVID was a sign. In fact, me, I call it as a light for Ugandans because many things have been exposed during COVID. Without COVID, maybe we couldn't manage to get this opportunity to see the things which were exposed during Museveni's leadership in Uganda. Now I appeal to all Ugandans, I always use a proverb of uh, like uh, saying that a lion, a lion, when he's angry, a lion take a decision by itself without consulting other lion. Then he go to another village and he wait for animal. When the animal come, a lion take a, a decision and energy and all effort to capture that animal. But for Ugandans, you can see now, Sister uh, Comrade Tina said $20. It was given to you, you did not receive it, but you keep on silent like a sheep. So, Ugandans, how long are you going to be sheep? Because you want to be a sheep for, for a lifetime, or you want to be a lion for one day. One day, when you stand for truth, you can liberate yourself. Mr. Museven, the things you are seeing now, if you give a chance to Mr. Museven for another five years, Ugandans don't be surprised that Uganda will look like North Korea. Media will be banned from Uganda. In North Korea, media is not there. Internet and all the things you see that we, now we have access on it. When Museveni come to power again in 2021, when you sleep and you give a chance and you say it's less concerned about us, Ugandans, you are going to be like a North Korea. So this is your time to liberate Uganda, to save the generations and the generation of Uganda to be free. Risk like a lion, who a lion risk one day and liberate itself from hunger. Don't be like a sheep to say in Uganda what they say, the man is a kafuge. Uganda where is he heading is a grave. People who are thinking that now you have something you are managing, even the people who are in the middle class, this time when this man happened to get power, you the people in the middle class, because he has tested it, he know that the middle class, you don't like him, you have been supporting Honorable Chagulani, so it's going to create a system which will bring you even from the middle class to go to the ground level. So my appeal to Uganda, let's stand as one. Fear, let me tell you a miracle. A miracle of darkness is right. Ugandan is now, you are in darkness. Let's look for a miracle. A miracle is a light. A light is for Honorable Chagulani, our principal, 2021, a light to light up on Uganda soil, part of Africa. Thank you, comrade. Let's keep our spirit up. Fear is a, a, a is any more of progress, and the fear is a destruction. Let's stand as one. We are going to liberate our country. You can see the signs of the dictator. The dictator fear the stronger people and the bold people. The dictator doesn't scared about the cowards. That's why you see that he has been capturing the so-called full figure and the so-called C-Papa. You can see all the C-Papa, the way they are misbehaving. Which country where you can see a person like a C-Papa to carry a gun, to move with the gun people, to go and shoot our headquarters and no any security personnel to bring him into accountable or to be brought in the book. My fellow Ugandans, Uganda is heading to Somalia. If you can see, see Papa go to Kamocha with the goons and started to shoot bullets, 
towards our towards our premises and no one to touch him and the security keep on covering him and protect him. So what do you expect? Do you want to have 100 CPAPs? It's your time. It's your responsibility to stand to eliminate the goonies like a CPAPA. Uganda should not return to Somalia. This is our country. We were born there and we are going to be buried there. We are not going to be buried in Somalia. In Somalia. Thank you, comrades. Let's keep our speed up. Our victory, mission 21, with the Honorable Chagranya, our principal, to be in the state house. Let rainy rains, let sunny suns the whole day. We are going to stand for, for our right and claim our country. Thank you very much, my comrades. Thank you very much, comrade, for those strong words. They were really strong and they came with all that feeling you know, and they really raise hopes of Ugandans and you have really encouraged them, you know, in the way that you have. Now I'm gonna run over to J Comrade JK. I would like to remind our viewers that we are gonna play for you as we are winding up an audio of Mr. John Baptist Chibalama, you know, by our tech team. And you're gonna hear for yourselves, you know, for those of you that have not heard. So prepare for that audio, please stick with us. I wanna move to Comrade JK for in two minutes, your closing remarks on all those issues that we have been, uh, you, you know, uh, talking about what you would like to say to Ugandans, you know, and before I move to Comrade Tina and before we have the audio. Please, Comrade JK. Yeah, thank you so much, Comrade Kingsley. Um, it has brought me to a point, all the fracas that is happening in my country has brought me to a point to think that Uganda did not have opposition before the coming of His Excellency Robert Chaglan Sentamu. Because mm. this is the situation uh, that please, we have so many. Please come again on that issue. <laughs> Make that statement again because I want people to understand it properly. You, yeah. you just say yeah. that Uganda did not have an opposition until the coming of Robert Chagulani Sentamu. You know, uh, come again and uh, put it in your own words. Because yeah, I want the exactly. people to get it very clearly. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Uh, it's bringing me to a conclusion that all before the coming of His Excellency Robert Chagulain Center, Uganda did not have opposition. Because mm -hmm. right now, we have over 20 political parties in Uganda. But why is M7 only focused on NUP, the National Unity Platform? We have uh, DP, we have FDC, we have UPC, and all these are the political parties. But due to the fact that President Museven know that it's his excellence by Chagulani sent him to succeed him, that's why he's sabotaging and deterring us from doing our activities as the party, diverting us and putting us into some other activities. So this is a clear indicator that President Museven, inside his heart, has considered. Remember, his excellence by Chagulani sent him is a very smart man. As the time we were struggling to, 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 to read for PLE exams in our P7, our principal was picked from P6 to come and sit for P7 uh, exams. <laughs> so you, you, you're dealing with a very smart person. You're dealing with a smart individual who has gone through life experiences, so many life experiences. So to my, the, my, my humble appeal to all Ugandans and to all the people watching this show, in all the capacity that you have, in all the small capacity that you can afford, whether you're in Dubai, whether you're in Qatar, whether in South Africa, anywhere, wherever you are in the world, make sure that at least on the village where you're born, in the villages where you people come from, at least create a small coordination of five people that you can even send uh, $10, that you can even send uh, $15 to at least find a way that you can add a stone on the liberation of your country. Because what will you tell your grandkids? That what did you do during the struggle? So we have to tell stories tomorrow when Uganda is liberated, unless we will we'll remain crying every now and then. The dictator is trembling, the dictator is in panic, and the same mistakes have been done with so many dictators all over the world. The time is now, and the solution is Robert Chagulani Sentamo, the president that has been embraced by millions of Ugandans. People power, our power. Our United power. we stand, divided we fall. Thank you.
Thank you very much, comrade. I couldn't add nothing on to that. It has been well explained and put together. Just to remind our viewers that uh, you can get actively involved in the, in the liberation movement of your own country by supporting the People Power Movement, uh, by, rather by supporting the National Unity Platform, because People Power has transcended into a political party, which is the National Unity Platform. Uh, unity platform, you know, using our support portals. There's a website for you and there's a phone number that has been already distributed by the president, you know, in the names of, uh, um, uh, uh, what's that name again? I'll, I'll come to it. Uh, uh, Daniel. Oh, oh, oh yeah, what? Daniel, you know, you can go to that number and you we will pin it up for you there so that you can give your contribution via m mobile money. And if you want to contribute for using our website, it is www.peoplepower.yugi.org. You know, www.peoplepower.yugi.org. That's our website. You can also donate to the movement through those channels and your cash will go directly to the headquarters in Uganda. Now, if you wanna give through other means, of course, the different chapters, the diaspora coordinators are doing a great job in their different the, the coordination teams. The USA has had a, a several fundraisers. You know, Canada is organizing, Sweden is organizing, Japan is organizing, uh, United Arab Emirates have done a couple and they're still organizing. Ugandans across the globe are really coming together to, you know, to, to help the movement because we know that uh, Honorable Robert Chaglen, you said, them is not going to do this work alone and he needs a lot of funds the, uh, a total of 1.7 trillion Uganda shillings was released in, in in budget fees you know for this election alone and we're not saying that to give 1.7 trillion but we're saying you can give what you can we can help ourselves you know we ourselves are giving you know everybody else is standing up for the course of liberating their own country and by so doing you are joining the mission 2021 and you are actively fighting you know 20th century wars are not wars with guns 21st century wars they are ones where we get actively involved by spreading word of mouth by helping with our little contributions so that in the end ugandans will be victorious and Museveni, I can tell you that as a pastor, I've prophesied this way time and again, and I've said, come 2021, we're gonna have a new president of the Republic of Uganda. Don't worry about that, be confident. I'm moving to Comertina to make her concluding remarks before we play for you that famous audio you know, from John Baptist Chivalama, so that you hear from the man himself, you know, of whom he, he's become the, the, the subject of the mother. Comertina. After all that we have said, you know, uh, what would be your appeal? I'm going to ask you to appeal or to make your closing remarks in reference to two groups of people as before. To the Ugandans, what would you say as an American? You know, because we have seen you opening the eyes of Ugandans in your statements, trying to tell them what they have not known, you know, and yet it's the truth. And yet you have also appealed to the American government or to the American people. Now, uh, with respect to all that has been said, what would be your concluding remarks and what word would you like to leave for both the Ugandans, you know, and both your fellow countrymen, the Americans? Of course, notwithstanding, you are a Ugandan at heart, so you're very welcome <laughs> to be a part of us. So please go ahead and uh, make your concluding remarks. Yes, thank you. Um, I would say in conclusion, um, for Ugandan people to wake up and to be careful and wise, um, the Bible tells us to be wise as a serpent, but gentle as a dove. Be wise who you are letting um, minister to you. Be wise to, you know, be alert to um, wolves in sheep's clothing. And, um, and as yes. onto the American portion, um, I urge America and other countries who are supporting Uganda to stop sending um, their, their money to um, M7 because the people are not receiving it. The people are not getting it. So I would like for um, the Ugandans to wake up and realize what, what is really going on. If somebody hasn't changed in almost 35 years in government, food for thought, what makes you think that they would change for the next five years? So be wise. And um, also, as per um, our, our fellow brother who's being held hostage, my prayers are with him and with his family. And 
I do believe with all my heart that he is saying things because he is forcibly being made to say them. So please, Conrad's fellow brothers and sisters, please keep that family in prayers. Thank you. Thank you so very much. You know, at this point, you know, I'll just give you my last words. You've heard from all the comrades and I would like to say thank you very much comrades for an excellent presentation. We're still on here, don't touch your dial. You know, my closing remarks would be especially to the Christian community and to the Islamic community and to all people of faith in Uganda. We have clearly seen that the, that the values for which uh, faith stands for are not the values that the government in power has been displaying over the past 35 years up to today and we can clearly see that there's a breach you know of, of, of rules you know as far as the word of god is concerned in all our different faiths and what we believe and i would like to say to you do not be afraid because you religious leaders you people are held in high respects by the population if you stay silent while Ugandans are being murdered, while young people, young men and women are being incarcerated just for putting on a red beret. If you stay silent and all you care about is to stand on your pulpits and ask for tithes and offerings and you know whatever money that you are collecting, you are displaying the worst kind of spirit any person would have. And you are placing a big doubt on your ministries and on your work for the Lord because the Lord God wants above all things that his people will be well, that he's, the oppressed people are helped. The Lord God does not want whatever is taking place in Uganda. So we just appealing to the religious leaders to not fear, to not fear. That Bible, that Quran that you're lead, reading tells you to stand for the truth no matter what. You know, I'm a Christian, I'll give reference to the Bible. The Peter said, the apostle Peter said, is it right for us to, to fear men instead of fear God? The same Bible say, do not fear, uh, you know, men because the, you, 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 the men because they only have, rather do not fear the devil because he only has power over the the body, but he has no power over your soul. Rather fear God who has power both over your body to destroy it in hell and also to destroy your soul in hell. You know, so please uh, let us come out as people who fear God and stand for the truth and not stay silent while people are experiencing all forms of injustice. You know, that's my call to all religious people, to all people who, of faith, to all people who hold God in high regards because our motto in Uganda says for God, and my country. If it is a country that follows God, then we ought to stand for the very values that stand on the Ugandan model. We should do what God wants, not what man wants. Museveni is not God. Robert Chagulanyi Sentamu has said that time, countless times. Museveni is not God. We should not fear him. He did not create Uganda. He, was, he came to Uganda and he will leave Uganda going forward. So it is our duty to stand as men and women of God, to stand as citizens of the Republic of Uganda and face him and tell him the truth that you are not leading the people in the direction that the God you claim to serve would have wanted you to lead them. And it is high time for you to step down and stop all the atrocities that you are committing to the people of Uganda. Now we are closing it with Comrade JB, JB in our tech team, and he's bringing you an audio of Mr. John Baptist Chivalama, as I would like to ask all of us to repeat our mission statements and, you know, clarify them that people power, our power. Our, our power. Our power. NUP, everywhere. Everywhere. And everywhere. NUP, you know, Robert Chagulanyi Sentamu for president come 2021. 2021. Yes. Absolutely. And vote the umbrella everywhere you see the umbrella. Vote justice, yes. vote equality, vote peace, vote economic prosperity. And that is voting the umbrella NUP party everywhere on every post of the election. Comrade JB, over to you, please, as we sign out. It's obvious to everyone that uh, this persecution is targeted for only one individual, Chagulani Robert Sentam. Now, thirdly, there has been reports that uh, Honorable Chagulani bought the party from us. That's rubbish, total rubbish. Uh, the political party is not a commodity uh, for sale. And uh, here you wonder which is supermarket that sells political parties or where you can go and begin to buy a political party. 
political party is not a commodity which can be sold or bought on the market. It is, uh, it is not something which can own uh, as an individual. You cannot own a political party as an individual. Therefore, it is a legal entity in which, which has its constitution and other bylaws. The comrades who are leading the party now became members last year and we followed the, all the steps uh, to change leadership. Honorable uh, Chagulani has never paid to us any shilling, any penny. I challenge whoever has that evidence of party be, having been short to come up with that kind of evidence and we shall challenge him. Oh, I repeat, Honorable Chagulani never paid any money to us. It's, the, it's an internal uh, leadership organization that we have to change our leadership within every four years of uh, parliament. So we change the leadership amicably, seeing that uh, probably Chagulani had an upper hand and some of us were the leaders for the last 16 years. And uh, for us, Ugandans were unable to propel the party to live where it is now. It's only two weeks ago when we unveiled this party, but you can see the, the fire that the party is, has put in the public. Therefore, the panic of government, therefore, the panic of the commission, Therefore, the panic of some of these uh, uh, so-called NRM scoffers. Because I think these uh, people try to put a claim on the party are uh, NRM what? Cadres of scoffers. You know? yes. It's been a new one in Uganda. If you want to get a new one, you can get a new one. You can't get a new one. Comrade JB, and you've heard from the man himself, from the tech team that is able to get us across the nations of the world from all our different uh, media channel outlets. Thank you very much to our panelists today. Thank you very much, Comrade Tina Brown from the USA. Thank you very much, Comrade Anthony Nanyumba from uh, Japan, Tokyo. From me here in Sweden, we would like you to, uh, to we would like to wish you a blessed week, you know, and a blessed night tonight. Until we meet again next time, it will be Red Friday. So remember to tune in so that you will hear from fellow Ugandans. Thank you very much once again. God bless people power, our power, NUP everywhere and everywhere. NUP. Thank you. Bye-bye.